Hi, everybody. This is Rory. He's come to be with us tonight for our story. So today we're going to talk about a special little baby named Moses. Moses is going to grow up to be one of the most important figures in the Bible. We will learn that God has a special plan for Moses. And we're going to learn that because Moses trusted and obeyed God, God was able to use him to rescue all the Israelite people. So this will be a lesson for us to learn that God has a plan for each of us. And when we trust him, he will guide us and protect us and do something special with us. So let's hear the story of Moses. There was once a king of Egypt named Pharaoh who was very afraid of all the Israelite people. He was afraid that there were so many of them that they would take his kingdom away from him. Pharaoh made the Israelite people slaves, thinking if he worked them very hard, they wouldn't have the time or power to fight against him. Pharaoh worried if he didn't do this, the Israelite people would join his enemies and go to war against him. So Pharaoh thought of a terrible, wicked plan. I know what I'll do, he said. I will have all the little Hebrew boy babies killed as soon as they are born. Then they can never grow up to be soldiers. What an awful thing for Pharaoh to do. He commanded the Egyptians to throw all the newborn Hebrew boys into the Nile River. One Hebrew mother named Yashabed looked at her little baby boy and said to her husband Amram, Look at our little baby. Isn't he so sweet and beautiful? We will never, never let him be thrown into the river like Pharaoh commanded. I have a plan, Yashabed said. I'll hide him so the soldiers won't find him and kill him. But the baby grew and grew, and now he didn't cry in a little voice, but in a big voice. The soldiers will hear him cry, said his mother, and they will take him away. I have a plan, Yashabed said. I will hide him so the soldiers won't find him and kill him. I will take a little boat of papyrus, reeds, and tar, and I'll put the baby in it. And I will let it float down the river. And that is just what she did. Then she hid him among the tall bulrushes at the edge of the river. Watch him, please, she told Miriam, the baby sister. The princess, the daughter of Pharaoh, and her maid were walking along the edge of the river. The princess had come to take a bath in the river. Look, she said to her maid, see that little boat in the water? Bring it to me. When the princess opened the basket, there was a baby. The baby started to cry. Poor little baby, said the princess. I will take you home with me and you can be my very own baby. I will name you Moses. It took great faith in God and much courage to do what Moses' mother did. 
It may seem a small thing to hide a baby in a little boat, but God's plan was to use his servant Moses to change a whole nation, and no obstacle could stop God's plans. You see, God would use Moses to rescue the Israelite people and lead them out of Egypt one day. God would give Moses great power, but it would take Pharaoh a very long time, and it would take lots of bad things to happen before he would let the Israelite people go. Pharaoh would not listen to Moses because he did not know and respect God. Finally, after God caused all the firstborn of the Egyptians to die, including Pharaoh's own son, Pharaoh was ready to obey God and let the Israelites leave Egypt. God was faithful to the Israelite people as they left Egypt by giving them a cloud to lead them when the darkness came. The cloud glowed with a light so beautiful that the people called it a pillar of fire. Moses said that God was in the cloud. But Pharaoh had a change of heart and he chased after the Israelite people with an army, including his fastest chariots. Moses told the people, don't be afraid, watch, and you will see the wonderful way God will rescue you today. He will fight for you. Then God used Moses to part the Red Sea with his rod, leaving a clean, dry pathway through the sea for the Israelite people to cross. Then God caused the waters to come crashing down. Killing the entire Egyptian army which was chasing them. God saved his people. He would help them as long as they obeyed and trusted them. him. God had freed them out of slavery in the land of Egypt. He had parted the Red Sea so they could escape from Pharaoh's army. He provided water and manna and led them by a pillar of cloud and fire. God cared for his people and he gave them everything they needed while they traveled through the wilderness.
Then God led Moses to Mount Sinai. Moses climbed the mountain, and God talked to him through a burning bush. It was there on the mountain that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, which are the ten best ways to live. So you see, Moses was a very special baby. God had a very special job for Moses to do, so God protected him. Moses, in turn, trusted God and accepted the great challenge that lay before him. We, too, can do any task, large or small, when God calls us. With his help, we can succeed. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Moses and for showing us how you used him to fulfill your plans to save your people. Thank you for showing us through his story that no obstacle can stop your plans. Let us believe you have a plan for each of us too, whether it be big or small. Help us to have courage to accept whatever challenge you put before us, trusting that with your help, we can succeed and make a difference in someone's life. Amen. I hope you liked today's story, and I hope next week you'll come back. Next week we are going to talk about David and Goliath. So I hope that you have a really good week. Know that I miss you and I'm thinking about you, and I'll see you next week. Bye!